We live, we love, we serve. Called to live, commanded to love, commissioned to serve. And if you can't remember all of that, we live, love, serve. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's worth celebrating. Amen. And while you're standing, let's go to God in prayer. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. We, we thank you and we love you. We are so very grateful for what you are doing in our lives. The things that we can see and those things that you're doing in the background, God. We thank you for protecting us from danger seen and unseen. We thank you for keeping us, for loving us, for sustaining us, for forgiving us, for giving us another chance. God, we bless your name. God, we thank you for this worship experience. God, we didn't just come to church. We are the church. And so we thank you for the worship that flows from our mouths, from our souls, from our spirits. God, we say thank you. Oh, you've been so good to us, oh God. And God, we ask that you bless this preaching moment, that you might speak to us, that your spirit uh, might pour into us, oh God. Allow me to decrease, that you might increase, that your children might hear you more than they see me. And we give you all the praise, and we give you all the glory, and we give you all of the honor. And we lift this prayer in your holy name as we say together, amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you take your seats. Amen. Amen. So grateful. So grateful for what God is doing. Um, and so grateful for all that we are doing with the help of the Lord. Um, but I don't know about you, but sometimes I just need a break. Any, anybody in the building just, just, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, I've got enough people. That's what we're going to talk about. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, Lord, I need a break. Come on, look at your other neighbor and say, Lord, I need a break. Oh, Jesus. I just, I, I'm looking and everyone is just so busy and we're moving from one thing to the next and we are doing more on top of more and it seems that it's never enough because we've got to do one more thing. We've got to say one more thing. We've got to become one more thing. We've got to acquire one more thing. And that stuff is tiring to the extent that many of us are in here today and even watching virtually and just exhausted just exhausted. I mean, I was doing some research um, and I realized that on average we make about 35,000 decisions a day. 35,000. And we wonder why we're so tired at the end of the day. It might not have been your body that was going as much as your mind was going. I, even when we think about what it takes, right, to prepare one meal, um, we think about what it takes just to prepare one meal. We've got to make our list. Then we've got to leave our house to go to the grocery store. We've got to get into the grocery store and go up and down the aisles, pick the things that we want off the list and some extra stuff too. Put those things in a basket or in a cart, or sometimes we carry them in our hand. Then we have to go up to the counter where then we have to unload everything we've loaded, wait for those items to be scanned. After those items are scanned, we have to pay for those items. Then we have to bag those items. Then we have to make our way out of the store so that we can bring those items back home. When we get back to our house, we've got to go back in the door. We've got to put the stuff on the counter. We've got to open the refrigerator, start putting the stuff in the refrigerator, putting other stuff in the cabinet, putting some stuff on the counter, and then we've got to prepare the meal. We got to season the meat. We got to take the stuff out of the refrigerator, get the pots on the stove ready to boil, turn the stove on, go ahead and cook the food. After we cook the food, Come on, somebody. Then we got to put it on our plate, figure out where we're going to eat. Then we got to figure out what we're going to drink with this meal. Amen. 
before we're able to sit down and have a meal. 226 decisions go into us eating one meal. And that's just one meal. When we think about all of the stuff we are doing every day, even outside of eating, and then there's this desire for more, not just what we have to do to prepare ourselves to eat or prepare ourselves to sleep, but then we gotta work. Then we gotta take care of the children. Then some of us are taking care of our parents. Then we kinda trying to take care of our family. Then so much so, then we gotta get that bag. We gotta get the next dollar. We gotta get the next job. We gotta get the next, all of these things every day to the extent that we are exhausting ourselves. In the 20th chapter of Exodus, from 8th through the 11th verse, it reads, Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day, somebody say the seventh day, is a Sabbath to God. Don't do any work. Not you. Not your son, nor your daughter, nor your servant, nor your maid, nor your animals, not even the foreign guests in your town. For in six days God made heaven, earth, and sea, and everything in them. God rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the Sabbath day. God set it apart as a holy day. How are you enjoying your Sabbath? This year, God placed it on my heart that we have to really begin to take the Sabbath seriously. It's the reason that we're sick. It's the reason that we're dying early. It's the reason that we're confused because we don't stop and take a break. Amen. The word for Sabbath, Shabbat, is to stop. Some of us slow down, but we don't stop. And there's a difference between slowing down and stopping. Just ask the police officer after they stop you for rolling through that stop sign. And many of us have stop signs glaring in front of us, but we still won't stop. I want to share a video with you of the women at FCBC and beyond and how we took the time to stop. Hey man, can we celebrate? Man, we had such an amazing time because we were willing to stop. Now, this is a gift that God gives. It's not a command to take anything away from us. It is a command to give. It's a command of abundance because there's enough hours in the day for us to do everything we need to do, enough days in the week for us to do everything we need to and still take time to rest. And so as we're saying, Lord, we need a break, God is saying to us, but I'm trying to give you one if you'll just take it. Because there are some war rewards for stopping, for ceasing the work, for slowing it down, for, for taking a break. And, and in Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verses 13 through 14, it says in the Message Bible, if you watch your step on the Sabbath and don't use my holy days for personal advantage, if you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a celebration, if you honor it by refusing business as usual, making money, running here and there, then, somebody say then, then you'll be free to enjoy God. 
Oh, I'll make you ride high and soar above it all. I'll make you feast on the inheritance of your ancestor Jacob and Leah and Rachel and Bella and Zilpah. I'm sure the writer just forgot to put those names in. Amen. Yes, God says so. And the word of the Lord is blessed. And so there is this call for Sabbath. There is this call for the stopping, the slowing down. And what we recognize is this is a command that God gave the Israelites after they were able to leave Egypt, after they fled so that they could go and actually be able to worship God. But remember, the Israelites had been forced with hard labor. They were working and working. This Pharaoh that rose that did not know Joseph oppressed them with hard labors and the more they worked it said the more they multiplied and so he made it even more difficult having them make bricks without straw they were used to productivity they were working and working this forced labor and it was all because of greed somebody say greed how do we know it was about greed? Because this Pharaoh, uh, the text says they built cities and Ramses and Pithom so that they could store these supply cities, storing all of the product that the Israelites were making. So they had come uh, accustomed to working and working and working and working. And so when God gave Moses the commandments, the fourth commandment was to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. And many of us can, can identify with those Israelites because we are working and working and working, running from here to there, doing this and that, checking off the list, dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's, doing more so that we can have more, have more to take care of more, to then get more. And it's never enough because we just want more. This culture tells us it's never enough. Get one more thing. Get one more thing. Get one more thing. And it is killing us. It's killing us physically. It's killing us mentally. It's killing us emotionally. It's killing us. I was in Texas this past week, spending some time with my mom, spent some time with my dad, my brothers. Got a call on Saturday that my cousin died. She was 53. And I'm just looking, and we don't know the cause. She just didn't wake up. Her husband went to wake her up, and she was gone. She did not wake up. And so the whole family is shocked. We're all, uh, you know, just, just stumped by this because she's the youngest of her siblings and the first to go. And, and I don't know about you, but I wonder, I wonder, I wonder with all of the people who are having all of these heart attacks and all of these strokes, if we could just take the time to stop. Maybe we could prevent some of these things from happening. Now this isn't for you to go back and say, see, that's why you had that heart attack because you didn't stop. That's not what this is about. This is about us looking at what we're doing and how we're taking care of ourselves so that we don't have to go and tell anybody else how to live their life. They can see it by looking at us and our capacity to stop, to take a break, to smell the roses. There's so much creative order around us for us to embrace, but when we're so busy walking down the street looking at our phones, we can't see the beauty of the trees. We're so busy stuck in our phones, we can't see the beauty, even hear the beauty of the birds that are singing. We are busy moving on to the next day, catching the next bus running to make the next appointment, and we are missing the joy of living. But it's right here in this text in Isaiah. God said there is a reward for rest. There is a reward for, tell your neighbor there's a reward for rest. It's right here in the text. It says if you watch your step on the Sabbath and don't use my holy day for personal advantage. Personal advantage. That means looking out for me, myself, and I. It's about mental rest. A lot of times when we think about Sabbath, we think it's only about physical rest, but God is not just concerned about our physical body. God is concerned about the totality of who we are. And so this notion of not taking holy days for personal advantage, it's about mental rest. 
It's about resting our minds because we are constantly thinking about how we can do this, how we need to do that, how we can get more mentally straining for more. It doesn't matter how much we have. We've got enough shoes in our closet right now. We can't even wear them all in a week, but yet culture tells us we've got to have the latest pair, the newest pair. How much is enough? straining our mind, thinking about what's next, how can I get ahead, looking for the next job, the next promotion, the next vacation, the next, because Instagram will make you feel like you don't never go on vacation. <laughs> Everybody always on vacation. And it makes you feel like, well, I need to do that too. I need to have that too. I need to go there too. And it is this constant desire for more, looking at what they got that you don't have instead of focusing on all the blessings that you do have. <laughs> Thinking about what they've done that you haven't done instead of appreciating all that you have done. We, we are, are, are having our minds going in circles and circles constantly. And how do you know that your mind needs a rest? Uh, anybody have difficulty sleeping? <laughs> because your mind won't shut down because it's going and it's going and the more you try to shut it down, the more you think about what you didn't do, what you have to do, who you have to call, that text you didn't send, it's going on and on. Anybody have difficulty concentrating? Have you ever said, wait, 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 excuse me, let, let me say this before I forget. Because we got too many tabs open in our brains and we can't even concentrate on the one conversation that's in front of us because our minds are all over the place because we haven't stopped. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you gotta stop. We gotta find a way to shut it down, find a way to give our minds the rest that it needs so that we can be creative, so that we can be innovative, so that we can be open to what God has for us. We have to stop. Tell your neighbor, give your mind a rest. The text goes on and it says, if you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a celebration. This is speaking, I believe, to emotional rest. Because some of us are so emotionally wired, we can't even calm down. We say things that we don't mean to say because we haven't even taken the time to think about it before we say it. Rehearsing pain, re rehearsing hurt, rehearse what they did to you and how it made you feel and, and how it's so hard, that, that complaining spirit that doesn't see all the things that are going on that are good, but only focuses on that one thing that's, that's bad, going through regretting what we didn't do and regretting how we should have done it, going through feeling guilty about what we did do or feeling guilty about what we didn't do, how we know we need emotional rest. When we're holding grudges, we need some emotional rest because that means we're holding on to stuff that we should have let go of. When we're thinking we're not good enough, we need some emotional rest because it means we're paying too much attention to what they got and what they're doing and you don't know what they had to go through to get what they got. And so sometimes you're coveting what they got. You're coveting what they went through to get what they got. Coveting what doesn't belong to us, wanting more of what someone else has, not being happy with who we are and who God has called us to be and who God has made us to be, finding ourselves jealous and envious. Jealous of what they have and envious because you want it for yourself. That means we're not getting enough emotional rest. We're missing out on the joy that God gives to us. God is saying, here, take this joy. And you're saying, no, thank you. I'd rather be mad. <laughs> God is saying, here, I, I will give you this joy that the world didn't give to you and the world can't take away. And we're saying, no, thank you, God. I don't want the joy because I'm hurting. and I'm having my pity party. No, God, I don't want joy. I'd rather be mad and angry and unforgiving. No, God, I don't want joy. I want to rehearse what she did, what he did over and over. How many times are you going to think about it? And what I would have done and what I should have done and how I could have. It's over. It's done. Take the joy. 
Come on, tell your neighbor, take the joy. Take the joy. Take the joy. It's there for you. You ain't even got to go look. If it's right there for you. If we could release some of the baggage, it's right there in the text. If you honor the Sabbath by refusing business as usual, making money, running here and there, that's not what you do on Sabbath. When you rest, you stop. And some of us need to stop. Our physical bodies are deteriorating right before our eyes because we refuse to stop. And then you know what we say. We tell ourselves, well, I'm going to stop when I get this. No, you're not. You're not. Because the culture is going to tell you that you need something else. And so until we start resisting and pushing back on what the culture is telling us that we need, we will not experience the peace of God because we'll be continuously on that grind trying to get the next thing, only to die early and leave it for people that's going to spit. I'm, I'm just trying to help somebody. We heard at the conference one of the facilitators say to us that busyness is a trauma response. It is our way of avoiding dealing with the stuff that's been going on in and through us. And so we find something else to do. We find another project to start. We find another situation to get involved in. We find things to do and we busy ourselves and busy ourselves until sometimes it feels like we don't know if we're coming or going because we haven't taken the time to stop. And I want to encourage you to take the time to stop, to cease, to trust God and see if God will not bless you in a way that you could have never expected. Sometimes when you take the break, give your mind the break, give your body the break, give yourself a break emotionally. When you come back, you're able to do twice as much in half the time because you're not running on E. Have you ever been running on E? See, I'm from Texas. We was, I was driving since I was a 10. And when, you, when the car get down to E, you got to slow down, drive real slow. Because you know that the gas is going to be running out. And I don't know what it is about slowing down. I guess when you go faster, you use more fuel. I know there's some mechanics in here. But we slow down. Can you imagine that that's what's happening with our bodies? That we're low on fuel. And so we're slowing down, but we're only making half the progress, but we're working twice as hard. But if we would just stop and allow ourselves to be refueled, allow God to fill us up with the grace, with the mercy, with the peace, with the joy, then we'll be able to do what God has called us to do, even with more vigor. We're doing all of this stuff, y'all. And one of the facilitators said while we were there, who told you to do all that? <laughs> who told you to do all that? And then you're complaining about having to do it when nobody told you to do it in the first place. <laughs> Come on, look at your neighbor and say, who told you to do all that? <laughs> Ooh, I'm trying to bless somebody. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bless somebody. I'm trying to bless somebody. We decked out for brunch because somebody told us we had to go to brunch. Now, we can make some eggs and bacon and have somebody bring over a casserole and somebody else bring over a fruit salad and spend a quarter of the money at home having a good time. But because they told you, you got to be outside. I'm trying to, okay. <laughs> so we have these statements, these if statements. Uh, if you watch your step on the Sabbath, and don't use my day for your personal advantage, only thinking about yourself. If you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's day as a celebration, not that you're mad because you got to stop, but that you're grateful that God has given you an opportunity to rest. If you do these things, then God says, I will reward you. There is a reward that is waiting for you. He says, if then it's a conditional statement. So in order to get over what's over here, you actually got to do what's over there. But what you have to understand is what's over here is already waiting for you. It's already been set up. So God has already done God's part. It's just time for us now to do our part. 
And so God says, if you stop and if you do these things, then, then, somebody say then, then. you'll be free to enjoy God. Oh, I'll make you ride high and soar above it all. I'll make you feast on the inheritance of your ancestors. You will be free. So resting is about freedom. Some of us are bound because we're not resting. But if we rest, we will enjoy the freedom, the freedom that comes in knowing God, the freedom that comes in being in God, the freedom that comes in resting with God, that God might rest with us. Can you imagine God trying to chase you down because you're so busy doing other stuff? God's like, hello, I'm right here. Can you come and spend a little time with me? I want what's best for you. Can you sit down for just a minute? Can you, re can you put the phone down for five minutes? Can you turn the computer off for three minutes? Can you turn the TV off for 30 minutes? Can you just sit with yourself and sit with God and enjoy what it means to be free? You'll never be more free than when you're sitting in the presence of God and you know that you don't owe anybody anything in that moment, just yourself and the rest that God wants you to have. It comes, rest comes with freedom. Tell your neighbor, rest comes with freedom. Rest comes with freedom. Whew. Trying to help somebody. We feel bound, we feel trapped. It's because we haven't stopped. We just gotta stop. He says, I'll make you ride high and soar above it all. What does that mean? Well, if you're riding high and you're soaring above it, I interpret that as elevation. Sometimes we're trying to get to the next level and we think that what we do on the computer is going to get us to the next level, but sometimes all you need to do to get to the next level is stop. Because you're trying to do everything. If you stop, it allows God to do some things for you. If you take your hands off of it, then maybe God can put God's hands on it and maybe you'll see the elevation and the progress you've been looking for. And you won't be tired when it comes. You ever been too tired to enjoy your blessing? Ooh, girl, you want to go celebrate your birthday? Girl, I'm tired. I It comes with elevation, soaring above difficulties, flying above challenges, because sometimes when you soar, you get a different view than when you're on the ground. I'm trying to help somebody, because when we're on the ground, all we can see is what's on the right of us, what's on the left, what's in front of us, that's behind. But when we soar above the clouds, we get an aerial view of what's going on so that you can rise above it. When you rise above it, then you can see things differently. You can see pathways and doorways opening for you if you just stop. Finally, he says, I will make you feast on the inheritance of your ancestors, Jacob and Leah and Rachel and Bill and Pula. <laughs> Amen. It took all five of them to create a nation, a nation. The, 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 the blessings of your ancestor who was blessed to be the father and the mother, the parents of a nation, of a nation. That means that there is no boundaries. This is the Joseph's blessings. See, Abraham's were blessings. It was localized. But Joseph's blessings were, were un, uninhabitable. It, it was just, it was, a, it was blessings without borders. When we think God can bless us one way, but God says, if you let me do what I do, I can bless you in more than just that one way. God wants to give us blessings without borders, but when we are trying to be in control so bad that we won't release it, then we're missing out on blessings without borders. So we just pray and pray and pray and pray for the one blessing, amen. But God's got like, is that all you want? I, God has so much for us, so much joy, so much peace, so much love, so much forgiveness. God has so much for us if we could just. So that's all I really came by to tell you today. Just stop. Every now and again, just stop. You're tired because you haven't stopped. You need a break because you haven't taken a break because you haven't stopped. 
Trust the God who wants to bless us in our stopping. When you think about people in your life, even the people who love you the most want more for you. They, 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 your job wants more. They, they want you to do more paperwork. They want you to have more clients. They want more. Even your children, God bless them, amen. Can you fix me something to eat, mama? Can you take me to school? Can you sign this? Can you check my, everybody wants something from you, but God is the one that wants to give something to you. So let's resist saying no thank you to God when it comes to rest. Rest is about abundance. It's not about lack. It's about knowing that you have enough time to do all that God has called you to do and that you'll have even more time if you stop. I know it doesn't make sense because it feels like if you stop, you'll lose time, you'll lose energy, you'll lose momentum. Um, and that's what, what the world's stopping looks like. But God stopping looks like refreshing you and renewing you and reviving you and pouring into you and giving you an opportunity to rest physically emotionally, mentally. Take a moment to rest yourselves. We are driving ourselves ragged, giving it all away, having nothing left for ourselves. And God is saying, I want to give you more. You don't have to go and get more if you just stop If you just stop, the text tells us stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But the only way you see the salvation of the Lord is when you stand still. See, we like this, the salvation of the Lord part, but we got to stand still. We all together? So as you go on your week, as you go even on this day, evaluate what you're doing with your time. Be obedient to this invitation to rest so that God can bless you without border, so that God can give you the joy that you can take advantage of these gifts that God has already given. I don't know about you, but I want the gifts from God. Amen. Because the stuff that the world gives you, huh? you take it or leave that. But the stuff that God gives is eternal. Embrace the joy of rest today. Take the break and keep on taking them. Amen? I, I just want to encourage you. Come on, stand to your feet. Some of us, we need to turn our phones off. Amen. we scared we're going to miss a call. They'll call you back. Remember back in the day before we had answering machines, you had to just keep calling and keep calling? My mom has Tuesday as her Sabbath. She turns her cell phone off. There's a message on her phone. Hi, it's Tuesday. I'm not answering calls today. Man, if we could start just creating spaces for ourselves so that we can enjoy the goodness and the abundance and the blessings of God. It will make our heart a little lighter. We'll be able to, to move forward with joy, unspeakable joy. So let us turn in our fatigue for joy. Let us turn in our exhaustion for freedom. Let's turn in our desire for more from, from the world to getting more from God and walk in that rest. Amen? 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 Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Listen, this sermon is about saving lives, y'all. We, we are dying too young. We are dying too fast. We are dying too often when God has called us to live, live that abundant life. We live that abundant life by slowing down, by stopping, by resting. Give your heart a chance to recuperate. Give your mind a chance to regenerate. Give your spirit, your soul a chance to heal. Lean into 
the rest of God. Come on, let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God, we bless your name. We thank you and we love you. And we're grateful for this day and for this message of love and of hope and of healing. God, forgive us for all of the times that we should have stopped and we didn't. Forgive us for all of those times we kept going and kept going and kept going. God, help us today to embrace the gift of rest, the abundance of rest, the necessity of rest, not just physical rest, but emotional rest and psychologically rest and mental rest. God, we thank you for this gift that comes with blessings of joy and of peace and of love that come with blessings of more of you. God, we thank you that you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We claim today abundant life and that comes through rest. Help us not only make the commitment today to rest, but help us develop, develop rituals of rest so that we can continue to rest, to stop along the way, to be obedient to you, and that we might receive the blessings that only come through rest. We thank you, God. We love you, Lord. And we lift this prayer in your mighty name, in your matchless name. And we say together, amen, amen, amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, stop, rest. Come on, look at another neighbor and just say, just stop, rest. Amen, amen, amen. As we prepare, for communion. Please don't leave. We have our communion moment. <laughs> oh. Yes. So we just wanted to say happy birthday. Thank you so much. Yes, can you put it down for me? Thank you. Yeah, you gotta do communion, yes. Amen, I love y'all MCBC, y'all are so amazing. A special thanks to Shepherd Circle. Amen, thank you, Sister Madej. And can I just give a shout out to all the Leos in the building, watching online, it is Leo season. So grateful, <laughs> amen, amen, amen.